which students do you feel good? These, these ones who think it's difficult but messy, those are the ones who I think have thought through, at least, um, at least in some way they've realized it doesn't have the right symmetry. Um, how explicit they are on that, I'm not, you know. So they realize it's going to be messy and that you can't, and often they, you know, as, as it's stated, they realize you can't pull it out, but then they think somehow that they can still do it um, if they only had mad math skills. Um, and oh, I also, just for fun, I, I, I tabulated how many people drew a picture because there was a uh, Gaussian surface was described in the uh, problem statement. The two, you know, a cube was described, a Gaussian surface was described. <coughs> Thirty-nine wow. percent of the CU students drew those two. Uh, actually, slightly less. One person drew some crazy Gaussian surface, uh, but most people, you know, a lot of people drew it, and many fewer in the paradigms course. Uh, but it was slightly different page formatting, so I'm not sure if it was differences in the students or just differences. Any correlation between yeah. whether they drew a picture and whether they got it right? Uh, on very cursory examination, it didn't like it looked like there was going to be, but I haven't done that yet. Um, yeah, it, it looked like a lot of people were just drawing drawing the question as they read it, maybe. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they were using it. Uh, so, uh, I'm not sure what this data means, and maybe we can discuss it a little. Uh, if you, if you have ideas what it means. Uh, I think it shows some students are certainly not thinking through the steps in Gauss's law, the steps of pulling things out of the integral. Um, students are often not making careful symmetry arguments. Um, but I'm interested in your ideas of well, why students are having so much trouble with Gauss's law when they, they, you know, they've been taught it twice. And in Steve's class, I think they've been, it's been, it's been explicitly modeled and they've been forced to go through the explicit argument several times. But they were still, ha still having trouble applying. But, but always now that I think about it, always in situations where you could use symmetry. Mm. So, so they were being forced when you can use symmetry to articulate why you can use symmetry and how you can use symmetry. But there was no activity in which, like this one, you couldn't use symmetry. And I actually wonder how often students think about equations as useful for achieving a particular end. Like, so you're you're posing this question, which is. I want, to, I, I want to know this particular piece of information. I don't want to know, is this equation useful in general? Does it help us do something? Right. Does it help us do a particular, reach a certain end? And I'm not sure that students are faced with that question all that often. Like, I think they're used to thinking and moving things around in equations to solve for whatever people tell them to solve for and not think about when it's useful to help you solve for one thing or not useful to help yeah. you solve for another thing. Right, right. Yeah, and it's interesting because we also ask them if it's true first, which yeah. Could be guiding or could be not. Could be really unhelpful. If you're like, well, yeah, it's true. So, so it's always good. Yeah, so let's do it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting. It's something we tried to emphasize in the trick form course that Gauss's law is always true but not always useful. But it's, I think the message, like the, the message, just did not get through the way we say it at all. Well, and in some ways, well, students coming to the program, I feel like they see integrals that they see as uncalculable, and they gradually learn little tricks to help you actually compute that integral. Yeah. And so the idea that there are integrals that no matter how smart you are, no matter if you're a professor or you know, have Mathematica, are just not right. Yeah, but this is going to be the case in any discipline. Uh, the thing that just keeps coming to my mind are theoretical perspectives in education research, where you have these doc students who are throwing these theoretical perspectives on top of stuff, and then you're saying, well, what work is this doing for you? Why are you doing this? And, and there's not a real good answer, because we fail to teach this exact same thing, which is, which is, no, you would use it if it does work for you, man. Yeah. And, and th they we're asking them, like Chandra suggests, a, a question that, that's really never been asked of them, that question. What work does this do for you, if any? Does this do the right work for you? Well, just to uh, mm -hmm. emphasize Chandra's point, I, I mean, the students uh, in general are not uh, forced to worry about whether an argument is rigorous. Um, they. Many of the students, uh, even at the advanced level or graduate level, believe the name of the game is to uh, get an answer without worrying about uh, rigor in the intermediate steps. It's, it's, as long as I got the answer, I get 100%. So when someone asks them to fill in all the gaps, they're uh, flummoxed because that's never been the game. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's interesting because these are, I think these are some of the issues we're trying to address with the transform class and some mm -hmm. of the goals of the faculty. Mm -hmm. Except for us, you know, with making it so students can realize which technique works for which kind of problems and how to pick 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 a technique to suit a problem. And there's a whole section of the CUE sort of 
target, targeted the testing that, um, which I, I think I need to look at from a Gauss's Law perspective uh, at least once because a lot of people choose Gauss's Law when they shouldn't or don't choose Gauss's Law when they should. Um, yeah, the thing that always puzzles me, I, 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 you know, I, as a teacher, you always try and get inside the student's head. I, I just all my life have had trouble understanding a student's motivation to doing this hard class when they think it's just about getting the answer and not forming coherent conceptual framework. When did anybody <laughs> ever tell them that was the goal? Pardon? When did anybody ever tell them that was the goal? And, 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 and what right. reward do they right, get right, for right. achieving that goal? That's worse than that. We teach them the opposite. No, we do. No, no, right. Right. Just to say we grade them on whether they oh, get the answer right, right. Mm -hmm. right or wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a pretty next start becomes an incentive in itself, like the getting the A or getting the yeah. right. You're getting the number. You get a number. You don't even do it. Which kind of comes back to Noah's point before. Not to go back to the question, <laughs> but, like the time but, was to rather, but rather to say what valuable things are these students doing? This is what you were looking at in the, the yes and the incorrect yes yeah. answers that but had value to them. That there was some good intellectual work that was going on, and students were moving along the right track, um, like which I think is very important both from a research perspective, but then also for the evaluation side. Yeah. So. Uh, I think I still have a lot of work to do um, understanding why this is so hard for students. I would like to figure out also what to do to help them. Um, there's some, well, there's some things I want to do before I talk about actions to help the students. I want to confirm this, you know, go through the CUE and do some interviews. Um, and there's more, uh, more, there is more of this particular question for me to read. Um, but also, I, I think it's going to be pretty clear that gas is a lot still a problem for uh, junior level students. So I think maybe the tutorial needs to be redesigned. Uh, what do you need to fail? Mm -hmm. They need to fail to use Gauss's law. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, what's the key question? Like, what is the tutorial designed around? Uh, this particular tutorial? Yeah, the one that you're discussing right now. Well, well, so there's a, there is a tutorial that uh, goes through Gauss's law. Um, and it does delta functions and Gauss's law together so in one tutorial. And what, what does it hope that students learn by the end? So the, the, the Gauss's Law portion of that tutorial is allowing the students to walk through from start to end the steps required to set up and use Gauss's Law in this form to find an E-field. Right. And because one of those steps is a symmetry argument. They're asked to make this symmetry argument. You know, they are asked in one question, right. what direction does the E-field point right. out But, but if, a, if a student approaches the tutorial with the attitude that mm -hmm. my job is to get the answer, mm -hmm. The, the tutorial will be lost on them because, you know, if they, uh, My, you know, so it's, hard, it's hard for me to see how a tutorial is going to train them to change their value system. Well, it's so not their value system, it's their epistemic framing, <laughs> which is exactly what, um, which is exactly what LD gets at. So I actually, I, I wanted to address that yeah. briefly. Mm -hmm. it's, I find that in this course uh, that I observed last semester, they are using perhaps a different epistemic framing mm -hmm. in the tutorial than everywhere else in the class. Um, particularly, I can compare the help room, which is a very similar setup, students sitting in group working on problems, to the tutorial, which is students sitting in group working on problems. Um, in the help room, they are very focused on getting an answer to homework question. But in the tutorial, they seem, from my observations, I mean, I haven't done anything quantitative, to be much more exploratory. Like, they're willing to just, you know, talk about one part of one question for half the tutorial if they're not happy with their answer. Um, and they go off, uh, they try to go off on physics, real physics tangents much more often, um, where they are like, well, this makes me wonder about the thing that happened to me the other day, and that related to this. So I think it may okay, be, a, the good. context of a tutorial may actually mm -hmm. be able to get students. Break them out of the classroom. Yeah, they're not, they often aren't thinking about getting the answer, they're thinking about understanding the concept. 